Hi, this is Ron. I'm going to go a little bit deeper now into the science of sharp. I've put out several videos about sharpening. I will put that down in the uh, comments section. Uh, videos about getting the burr, uh, what sharpness means, how to test for sharpness, things like that. Uh, from a bow hunter standpoint, sharp is something we should all care a great deal about. Not all heads are coming from the factories as sharp as we'd like them, and when we use a broad head for practice or we shoot an animal with it, we want to return it back to a razor's edge. What exactly does that mean, to return it to a razor's edge? How do you quantify that? Right? There's, you can shave with it, you can cut a rubber band with it, but what exactly does sharpness mean? You know, we, we know it when we see it, but quantifying is kind of tough. Well, I picked up some gear that's going to help me quantify that. One of them is this Best Certified Sharpness Meter or Sharpness Scale. And I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger for you so you can read it, but it tells you what sharp means when cutting through a certified test media, which looks a lot like two pound test line when you're fishing. test media that will go in this holder when I have the media stretched across here I will slowly press a blade through when it cuts it that tells me the amount of force it took to cut that certified media on top of that I'm going to be looking at the sharpness under a 1600 power USB microscope that I'll have hooked to my laptop so not only So not only will we be able to see sharp or degrees of sharpness, but then we can test for sharpness as well. Now, as I said, we all know sharp. Well, some of the things I'm going to be testing are a brand new shaving razor blade, a brand new box cutter blade, a brand new Havilon blade, And then what I'm going to be doing next is putting that up against a broadhead blade that I'm sharpening. In this case, it happens to be a broadhead that I'm designing and working on. I've already taken a couple of deer and a hog with it, but I hope to take it to Africa with me this fall. Um, these blades that I'm making are 01 tool steel. I've heat treated them, tempered them to about a Rockwell 58, so they're very hard, very durable. Uh, I think they'll do very well, and they have done pretty well so far on deer and hogs. Now this blade is 40 thousandths thick. If I look at a razor blade, right, that's one fourth of that. That's 0.01 thick, right? It's about as thick as a piece of paper. The same thing with the box cutter, also very thin, not very durable. The Havilon's a little bit thicker, but we wouldn't hunt with any of those three blades. They're just not durable enough. So there's sharp and there's durable, and I'll be doing some durability stuff later on. But for the purposes of this test, I'll be sharpening this blade in my guide, my Stay Sharp Gray Guide. Now, it won't matter if you use a Stay Sharp Guide, a KME Guide, a Lansky Guide, if you freehand it. I don't care what method you employ to get it to sharp. I hope to explain what sharp means, what it looks like, and how I can actually verify it on a scale. So I'm going to be sharpening on common items, wet, dry sandpaper. 
That's everybody's got access to that. You don't need anything fancy. So I'll be sharpening on 240, 400, 800, 1200, 2500. Uh, I've even got 5,000 grit. Then I went out and picked up some 7,000 grit, 50,000 grit, and even some ceramic lapping plates. That's getting kind of geeky and nerdy and it's overkill and over the top, but I have an expectation of what sharp is based on these known sharp blades and I would like to be able to get there. Now, the issue is my blade angle. So the blade angle on these three known sharp items is very low, like a fillet knife, it's very low, which means it's not very durable. The angle I hope to put on here is 23 degrees on the side. that's going to be a much more durable blade. So blade angle makes a big difference. At each grit, I'm going to be getting a burr. If you don't know what that means, click down on my description. I've got a couple of videos about getting a burr. If you're a bow hunter and you're sharpening blades, you're going to care about that. It's the key to getting something sharp. Uh, why am I using multiple grits? Because you can't get something sharp with one grit. If I start with 240, my blade's dull, I hit a bone, I pass through an animal, I got some touch-up to do, I'm probably going to start with 240. The test is going to show me what 240 looks like and how sharp it is. Then I'm going to go to 400. Why 400? Because I need to get rid of all the scratches that 240 created. I can't leave any behind on the very edge of this blade. I can't leave any of the 240 scratches behind so I need to get rid of all of those at 400 and create a burr and establish a new edge. Why do I need to go to 800? Because I need to get rid of all of the 400 scratches. 1200 gets rid of all of the 800 scratches. 2500 gets rid of all of the 1200 scratches. 5000 grit gets rid of all of the 2500 scratches. And if I leave any behind, they'll certainly show up in the microscope under 1600 power uh, magnification. So what I described to you, I'm going to also put in insets in pictures in the videos uh, or the video here that'll show you a little bit closer up exactly what I'm doing. It's not real high tech. Sharpening a blade on wet dry sandpaper, looking at it, testing it for sharpness. Uh, I'd love to be able to reach the level of sharpness of known things like razor blades. I think we owe that to the animals that we hunt to be absolutely as sharp as we can. And like I said, in future videos, then I want to look at things like quiver dulling. Take standard foam from a quiver, run my blade across it 20 or 30 times. That's the insert and take out of an arrow in and out of a quiver over the course of a season. You may start with a really sharp arrow in the beginning of the season. Quiver dulling is a real thing. I want to quantify that. And again, that probably will be in a later video where I check uh, durability of edges and see what the effect is now that I've got a means of actually uh, doing some quantitative testing with some certified test media here. So stay tuned there's going to be a lot of uh, pictures that I'm going to inset then some videos more pictures where, I, where I, I will break this all down and hopefully it'll make sense to you and show you exactly what sharp means in each of the different grits as we go through. So stay tuned.
240 grit. Four hundred grit. Eight hundred grit. Twelve hundred grit. Twenty five hundred grit. Buffing compound after 2500 grit. 'll hope you found value in that um, now we can quantify what sharp looks like uh, my methods I'm sure they weren't perfect uh, I tried to drop the blades in as slow as I could without as much lateral movement as possible um, I'm rather new to the tool but I think I was getting it right and we were able to actually best razor blades um, now I can quantify this and say that my blades are sharper than a razor blade and it won't just be some vapor it'll be actual factual information um, I went back after 50,000 grit and ceramic lapping I went back and I started over but I started at about 1200 grit I wanted to make sure I was really getting rid of every scratch I did 1200 2500 5000 Again, went through um, 7,000, 50,000 lapping plates. It didn't matter. 5,000 seemed to be the point of no return. I couldn't get it any sharper on this scale. It made the blade shinier 
it didn't produce a sharper edge. So for my taste, 5,000 grit seems to be about as far as I'd ever want to go. Now, how sharp do you want to go? Well, that's entirely up to you. Um, sandpaper is cheap, right? You can get sandpaper for close to a dollar a sheet. And if you can buy 240 to 5,000 grit at a hardware store or an auto parts store and just put it on a flat surface and sharpen it, I think that's you know a low cost way to become super lethal sharper than a razor blade. The key is make sure the grit that you're using now is used long enough to remove the scratches from the prior grit and one way to verify that is getting a burr at every grit and again look down in the description for those videos on getting a burr. Getting a burr means you've reached the apex and you fold it over some metal. You've removed enough metal on this side that you've actually folded it over. Now do the other side and fold it over before you switch to the next grit you will have removed all those scratches. If I try to jump and I go from say 240 grit and I jump right away to 1200 grit, I'll never get the scratches out from 240 and my blade will still only be 240 sharp with a shine of 1200. That's why that gradient of different grits and the time spent on. Now, I told you that the blade that I used was a uh, for a head that I'm designing myself and then I've taken two deer and a pig with it. I've got the blades here and I'll put a little picture in. I took a pig last weekend with these exact same heads and so I know how sharp they were when I went on the pig hunt. Now this happened to be a really nice uh, about a 250 pound pig. Got a complete pass through and the arrow slammed hard into the dirt. Pig ran off. I pulled my arrow out, knocked off as much dirt as I could, and when I brought it home, I hit it with a toothbrush, cleaned it up, and I felt every edge, all six edges. This happens to be a three blade broadhead, but it's got six edges. There wasn't a nick in the steel. So I thought, what the heck? I ran it through the tester here, and my average was around 390. That's not bad for going through a pig and into the dirt. So I know that I can take each of these blades, sharpen them up. Maybe I'll start with 800 grit on these, reach a new apex. Uh, these will be reusable, certainly, and that's a testament to the steel. And that's something I'll be covering in other videos on... I can make any steel sharp, even the softest bean can lid, I can get sharp. How long it stays sharp depends on the quality of the steel. Now, I used tool steel. Good quality blades stay sharp. Iron will, A2 tool steel. Amazingly sharp and will stay sharp. Cutthroats. Fantastic hard steel. There's some really great non-stainless blades out there that are uh, just fantastic for holding edge. Why do we care? And why wouldn't this razor blade work? Well, it's got to go through hair. Before I got through the hair and reached the dermis, that razor blade would be dull. Now, maybe the box cutter would make it through the hair and the dermis, but the first rivet hit, it would be toast. Maybe the Havilon would get through the hair, the dermis, and the first rib. Likely the edge would be rolled. Now I expect that blade to do some work. Cut some organs, cut some bleedy things. Make sure that I uh, really do some damage. I need a blade that can go through all these layers, come out to the last rib, and still be sharp. There's a lot of heads out there that the steel isn't that great and isn't going to do that for you. So in other videos, I'll be talking about that. I'll actually be cutting some things, including deer hides and hair and bones and looking at durability. And then further down the road, I'll be doing the same test on factory store-bought blades. I've got quite a few in my collection by the nature of my company and put out a few more videos. And so you'll get a, a, a feel for not only what sharp means, but what sort of steel are you dealing with? Uh, does it hold an edge? How durable it is? If you've shot an animal and you've shot through an animal, or maybe you didn't get a pass through and you looked at your blade and 
man, the edges are all rolled over. All you hit was a rib or something. You know, it gives you something to think about. But if you blew through an animal, like I've, I've shot some really big animals with cutthroats, uh, blew through ribs in and out and into the dirt, picked the head up, brushed it off, that head was still great. That edge took a couple strops and I was back in business. So not all steel is created equal. While I can get it all sharp, does it stay sharp from the hair to the last rib? That's a quality or a quantity of the steel that you used. So I hope you found this of some value. I'll be doing some more videos. Like I said, down below, there's some links to other videos I've done on sharpness because sharpness matters. Eventually the arrow gets there. And when it does, you really want this thing to be razor sharp. And now we can quantify what razor sharp is. So thanks for watching.